I think The Boys is one of the best shows on TV at the moment, and that's coming from someone who isn't a big superhero guy. Like, I'm not super into all the latest Marvel stuff, so when I saw the promos for this, I dismissed it as the newest, edgy comic book thing. A grotesque, splashy parody with lots of violence and snappy insults, it looked like something an angsty teen would like, or someone who hated the last eight Star Wars movies, but this isn't that at all. Instead, Eric Kripke has created a scathing social commentary on modern society that boasts emotional undertones, some career best performances and fantastic character development. And not to undermine the entire genre, but I don't see this kind of depth in other superhero stuff. It earns its reputation as a layered super drama, with more time spent fleshing out motivations and building up relationships than catchphrases and fight scenes. For the first time in a while, a superhero thing is more about the story and less about the spectacle. If this makes it sound pretentious and depressing, yeah. You wanna watch me have a wank? It'll cost you a tenner. It's definitely not. It's actually pretty fun for the most part, with balls to the wall, uncensored jokes, and incredibly zany performances. And I can't think of too many other shows that are able to elicit similar responses to both violence and comedy, leveraging the context in such a dynamic way that you could be crying at what made you laugh only scenes before. Like, there's still good and bad in the show, it's not completely subjective, but your relationship and allegiance to the different characters affects how you watch the show. And that's the sign of a damn good satire. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. For those who haven't seen The Boys, it focuses on an alternate reality where superheroes or soups are treated as celebrity demigods, and most of them work for a powerful corporation called Vought International. The most powerful soups are called The Seven, and they are led by this fucking psycho, Homelander. The only man in the sky is me. Now, Homelander is basically a Superman ripoff. He could literally kill everyone on the planet if he wanted to. He's top of the food chain. All the other soups are terrified of him. But the reason he's so amazing in this show is he's an employee for Vought voluntarily. He has a boss. He goes to work. He does what he's told. All because he's so desperate to be loved. Homelander's one weakness is his crippling insecurity. And that makes for a fascinating character. You've got to mention that it does help that Anthony Starr is giving an all-time performance. He's so freaking good in this, but we'll talk about that soon. Vought sees the soups as commodities. They're used to advertise fast food, they star in movies, and they're occasionally sent to murder high-ranking US officials. The usual stuff. But because they're treated with such reverence, most of the soups are absolute fuck-ups. They're drug and sex addicts, they accidentally kill people, and Vought have to cover it up. Which brings us to our quote-unquote good guys, the boys. But don't you worry. Daddy's home. They're a bunch of vigilantes who have been wronged by the soups at some stage, and now they're fighting back. But because they're normal people, they have to use skill, cunning, and some dirty tricks to land any punches. Their main aim is to kill as many soups as possible with the ultimate goal of killing the unkillable Homelander. We'll talk about their leader, Butcher, shortly, but the boys' lack of superpowers is what makes the show truly magical. Even though there are people shooting lasers out their eyes, everyone in the show feels real, with relatable stakes, just enough jokes, and a sobering look at the relationship between multinational corporations, governments, and the rest of us plebs. Which I thought was pretty funny because this show is made by Amazon and yeah, Jeff Bezos is kind of a supervillain. <laughs> <laughs> Much like Succession, which I think is indisputably the best show in the world at the moment, this is all about power. But unlike Succession, which focuses on boardroom meetings and intergenerational warfare of the global elite... My son, that was your best shot. You lost. The Boys looks at how decisions made by this 1% affects the rest of society. Succession never shows the little people, but many of the characters here are just normal, regular dudes like you and me. And much like people in the real world, their lives have been destroyed due to negligence by rich, multinational corporations. Butcher has a long-standing vendetta against Homelander, Huey's girlfriend is literally eviscerated in front of him when a soup runs through her, and Kamiko was a lab rat for Vought to run tests on. And after the last few years, which haven't been too great, let's be honest, I found it hard not to form a connection between the show and real life. Not to say I've had a superhero kill my girlfriend, but you know, distrust in higher powers, inflation, cost of living, Elon Musk, yada yada yada, there are a lot of elements in the show that are reminiscent of real life events and concerns. So while it's marketed as satirical superheroes for adults with lots of sex, violence and politics, I think it's the satire that propels the show, not the soups. The superpowers make for some entertainment 
entertaining scenes and laughs, but the symbolism of these characters and the eerie similarity between soups and real world celebrities and politicians is why you're watching the show. And like any good satire, no one is safe. Far left, far right, bang in the middle, everyone's beliefs are torn to shreds throughout the show. Well, that's not entirely true. It's not like the show says racism is cool or anything like that, but it ridicules how real life arguments between opposing sides are often so badly structured and always seems to devolve into people smacking each other in the street. There's constant propaganda from Vought, there's virtue signaling from the other side. Like, there were so many moments where I laughed and then a few seconds later you realise how sad it is that this shit happens all the time in the real world. It truly is amazing writing. And even when I had my preconceptions, my belief shredded, I still thought it was funny because the show is lampooning everyone. And judging from what I've seen online, people seem to agree. It's refreshing to have a show that doesn't definitively take one side, especially when you're talking about something as divisive as politics. The casting of this show is fucking incredible. Carl Urban and Anthony Starr, my god boys, you are absolutely crushing it here. It might be stupid to talk about casting before we get into the characters, but I just can't help myself. These performances are honestly reason enough to watch the show. Homelander and Butcher are truly two of the zaniest, unhinged characters we've had in recent times. I wouldn't say they're pure evil, but they're both pretty close, and therefore it is absolutely astounding that Urban and Starr's performance performances invoke some sort of empathy for them. I felt sorry for the bad guys, which is crazy, and it's a sign of an absolutely stellar performance. On the surface, Homelander is the metaphorical spitting image of American fascism. He's draped in a red, white, and blue flag and has no issue murdering people in the name of patriotism. Dan and the other brave Marines of 2nd Battalion are helping keep you safe from the supervillain threat. So yeah, he should be a bad guy. But Star has been very vocal about the character being misunderstood. He claims that just like anyone else, all his flaws are the result of a traumatic past, as well as the very real pressures that come with celebrity, so he's not really a bad guy. And while I don't particularly agree with this, somehow, some way, he backs it up with his performance. I don't make mistakes. I'm not just like the rest of you. I'm stronger, I'm smarter. I mean, the way he contorts his face to communicate really subtle emotional changes, absolutely bonkers. He's also got the perfect game show smile, but with really dead eyes. You can tell that he's very dangerous behind the perfect facade. If they had to remake this entire show, but they could only keep one actor in it, it would have to be Anthony Starr. I think everyone agrees this is one of the best superhero performances, if not one of the best performances in the last 10 years. And if he's 1A, Carl Urban is 1B. B. Butcher is an amalgamation of every hard-ass, street-tough alpha revenge. He's crude and blunt and violent. No. Either he goes with you, or I break your legs. And this means Urban brings all his playful energy to the role, swearing at as many characters as he can in his Cockney accent. Anytime a scene closes on a zoom in to Butcher's face and his stupid smirk. What you look cool. I just wanted to scream, it's fucking delightful. But Urban also does this thing with his face where you can tell that he doesn't really mean a lot of what he says. He's a bit of a softy deep down, he's got a bit of nobility, and definitely in seasons two and three, Carl Urban taps into that more human side of Butcher. It, again, it's just a bloody fantastic performance. Without Star and Urban, this show is clearly much worse. And when the two face off in these scenes, that's what you wait for each season. It's electric, these guys are both black bloody lightning rods in this show, and hopefully one of them wins an Emmy at some stage. I don't know if they've been nominated. Maybe give Anthony Starr an Oscar, I don't know. Writing long-form TV is really difficult because it's hard to maintain a consistent level of excellence for multiple seasons. That's why I love limited series. It's way harder to fuck up a show in only 10 episodes. And as we know, a TV show is only as good as its characters. That's why I was skeptical heading into The Boys. People are obsessed with making edgy video essays about the complexity of superhero characterization. So today I'm going to be outlining why Batman was actually a communist. 
But let's be honest, most superhero characters are fairly basic stereotypes. And to start with, the boys follows the same blueprint. Deep is the desperate sidekick, Starlight is the innocent newbie, A-Train is the charismatic likeable one, but then everything gets flipped on its head. Deep is an insecure womanizer who has sex with fish, Starlight becomes a badass vigilante, A-Train has an arc that covers depression, romance and race relations. I love how the writers make a concerted effort to create a flawed reality like real life where no one is reduced to just being the comic relief character. Like that would probably be deep, but they give each character such a ridiculous amount of screen time and backstory that they become relatable human beings. And despite me ripping on superheroes for 10 minutes, do I still get a kick out of their different powers? Of course. Each season it's so much fun to see their new abilities and watch someone slam someone's head through a table or whatever. I'm still a big kid at heart, so the action is always entertaining. We've also got to talk about Huey and Kamiko. Now I don't think Huey is a particularly compelling character. He's a shy, boring dude who falls into this world when his girlfriend gets killed. But nobody can look me in the fucking eye and say I'm sorry. He's basically the audience surrogate so that we can learn about the soups with him. But man, is Jack Quaid great at playing dorky. And in the world of superheroes and super thugs, the barometer of a normal guy being in the room makes the scene so much more fun. Which is kind of funny when you consider his dad had such a commanding screen presence. Dennis Quaid is here! And Kamiko's arc, sheesh! Kamiko is a mute, at one stage kills a bunch of people with a glass dildo, and she has the most endearing character arc in the show. And that that's, that's probably everything you need to know about the boys, to be honest. Actually, Black Noir never talks either and gets an insane amount of development. The writing in this is nuts. So to summarize, this is just one of those special shows where everything went right. Casting, writing, directing, the comedy in it always lands. It is a home run, and if you haven't watched it yet, well, I don't really know what else I can do to convince you. Make sure you go and watch this, guys. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.